Hey, what's up guys? This is Eric with Painting Business Pro and this video is about how do you know if your prices are right? And what does it even mean to have the right price? All right, so um, that's what we're gonna talk about. And before I even get into this, it's important to say that you need to have an estimating process and procedure that gets you the same price every single time. All right, so production rates, hourly rates, like you need to have a process. It can't be eyeballing it, you can't be winging it. You need actually a process that gets you the correct pricing. But that's not what this video is about. This is how do you know if your price is right? All right, so let's assume you've got a process to come up with your price. How do you know your process is getting you to the right price? So the first thing is, is clients. Can you know from your clients if your price is right? Um, if you go out and you, know, you do some estimates and then clients say, oh, you're, you need to bring your price down, that's too high, that's too much, that was more than I was expecting, I got a lower bid. Is that how you should find out if your price is right? Absolutely not. I have another video on that about why you can't listen to your customers about your price. So that cannot be an option because you know what, client, you know what clients have never said? Eric, you should charge more. Okay, so, and some of you, a lot of people, that's probably one of the biggest things in our industry, is people aren't charging enough. And it's why people aren't thriving enough in our industry. So you can't listen to customers to know if your price is right. Um, and again, I have another video about that. Subcontractors, can you listen to your subcontractors? Nope, can't do that, because they're always gonna tell you your price needs to be higher and they need to be paid more. Why do they say that? Because it works. You know how many times I've heard, I've had business partners or production managers or painting business pro members literally like give subcontractors more money simply because they asked. So they wouldn't be doing their job if they weren't asking for more money. All right, that's literally how they make more money. Wouldn't you ask, if you could just like tell clients, hey, I, I, need, I, need, I need some more money on this and they just gave it to you and it wasn't even a problem, they like literally kept hiring you and hiring you and hiring you again, you'd ask for more money too. So you can't listen to your subcontractors because they always want more money. They always want the price lower. They always want the price higher. Can you know your, it is based on like the hourly rate in the area. This is a question I've seen people ask like, hey guys, anybody in, in this area of the country, what's the, what's the hourly rate here? There's no such thing. There's not really a thing uh, about the hourly rate because if, if this painter, I could have two different painters. One guy could paint this house in 50 hours. The other one paints it in 100 hours. I, the guy who's doing it in 50 hours should get paid a lot more money because he's a fast, efficient painter. There's no such thing as an hourly rate. There's, so anyways, we're, we'll show you what, how you do answer that because yeah, people need to earn great money, but it's not based on an hourly rate, all right? There's estimating and then there's what people earn and those are two different things. I also have another video on that. What other, con what other contractors are bidding? So this kind of goes back to your clients. Like, oh, I saw these other bids, like my bid was four grand and I, this guy's over here bidding it for 2,800. So should you lower your price because of what other contractors are bidding? No, you should improve your sales process so you can still win bids at your price. But again, we still haven't answered the question of how do you know your price is right? Now you need to have a process to get to the same price every time, but how do you know that price you're getting to is the right price? It's really simple, it's two things, okay? So the first one is you need to be able to track the best crews. If you want to run a really good business, you got to be able to attract great painters. Because if you're not attracting great painters, then you either have to babysit or micromanage or it hurts your reputation. In some way, it limits your ability to build a good business. You need to be able to attract and develop good painters. And good painters aren't going to work for peanuts. The best painters can, can command the most money. Because you know, if I'm, a, if I'm a painter, I'm a subcontractor, and I'm working for somebody, and someone else comes in and offers me more money, I say, hey, I got offered more money, I'll stick with you if you pay me more. They'll keep paying me more until they can't. I'm gonna get the most money if I'm the best. All right, so that's the first thing. Can you attract and keep great painters? Now, keep attracting and keeping great painters, it's more than just money, but if you aren't paying them good money, all those other things won't matter. So that's the first thing. Can you attract and keep great painters for what you're offering? That's the first thing. The second thing is, can you hit your profit margin? So let's just take a job. Let's say that we go bid this job and let's say the best crew, they, they're gonna need $2,000 for this job. Okay, that's what they're gonna need. And my profit margin needs to be 50%. That means I've gotta charge $4,000. That's gotta be my price. It's that simple. 
to attract the best crews, they, they want two grand. And it's not want. We'll come back to this in a sec. And I need to make 50% on gross profit. I still have overhead marketing, sales managers, project managers, you know, office staff, insurance. There's other things I have costs for, so I need to make 50%. Those are the two things. That's how I manage my price. Now, if that's the price, well, and you're not making sales, you need a better sales process. And one, so a couple quick warnings. One is you can't let your crews drive up the price. So when I say they want 2000, what people say, they're, in, in our business, actions speak louder than words. So if I say, hey, I can pay this price, and they say I want more, I say I can't do more. And so this happened to us just the other week. We had a subcontractor and they were about to start a job and then they called and said, I need more money. And we said, oh, sorry, can't do it. And we sent them home. Called us back later that night and said, oh, never mind, I'll do it for that price. You guys are great guys. I really like working for you. I'll, I'll do this one. It was like, ah, nice, nice, nice try. Okay, so it's the market needs to say, so you keep saying this is my price. Will they, will they come back? And if you're literally just like losing people and they won't come back after you won't budge, then you probably do need to bring your prices up a little bit or you need to address some of the other things about being um, a better person to work for. Okay, so that's how you know your prices are right is are you hitting your margins and are you able to attract good people? All right, and you gotta be careful that they don't just keep driving your price up by just telling you, I need more, I need more, I need more. Um, you've got to work that out. So I have more, more detailed training on that. Again, this is a YouTube video. I can't get into all the specifics, but hopefully this gives you a good idea and that you at least don't fall in the trap of changing your price based on clients, so contractors, hourly rate, or other. You need to build a business plan. I need to know, hey, these are my margins I need. I want to attract good people and if I want to sell jobs at this price, I got to have a good sales process. I got to be good at marketing and I got to have a good production process if I want to keep the best crews in addition to paying them well. So anyways, hopefully that helps you understand the economics of knowing do I have the right price or not? And again, you've got to have good estimate standards so you get the right price every time. Otherwise, you're just guessing and you know their word is as good as yours. Okay, so that's all I got for you. Hope you enjoyed it. Hey, what's up? It's Eric with Painting Business Pro. I hope you enjoyed the video, but I wanted to give you a quick little message because the truth is, if you really want to build a great company, there are no shortcuts. You're not going to learn how to build a great company by watching clips on YouTube or clips on Facebook or even attending webinars or listening to podcasts or reading endless business books. The truth about building a really great company is that it takes a lot of time and it's really important that you invest in your, your development and education of yourself as a business owner and as a leader, it takes a lot of time to build the necessary systems to building a great company. It takes a long time to build yourself as a great leader who can build a great culture and recruit and train the right people. And that's just the reality of building a business. There are no shortcuts. And the way that I help people build a great company is in my Painting Business Pro training program where we do go really deep on all of those things that you need to master to build a truly great company. So if that's what you're really interested in doing, you can learn more about the Painting Business Pro training program by clicking, clicking the link below this video and uh, you can check it out there.